Welcome, everybody, to Winning in the Shadows, breaking down Dana White Contender Series 2024, Week 2. Andy and Jim here. Uh, I will start off by saying I think this could be the best week of the season. Agreed. This, Definitely agreed. The, all of these fights have a great story or a lot of potential for excitement. I do think it's pretty bettable. Um, let's get into the very first one. Billy Brand and Cody Haddon. Uh, what do you think about this fight? Well, we got, we got two guys here that are the only thing anybody can talk about either of them is that they fought two UFC fighters. All right. You got Billy brand who fought Peyton Talbot and then you got Steve Ursig on the other side. Now I went back and watched this Peyton Talbot fight. That is not the Peyton Talbot that we know and love that Billy brand fought. Not one bit, one and O oh, Peyton Talbot. <laughs> I excuse me if I don't put any stock in this guy losing. <laughs> Keep in mind, um, getting finished. <laughs> yeah, getting finished by Peyton Talbot. Uh, I like what I see from Cody. I really do. I think he's more when well rounded. I love the combinations. I mean, he uses every part of MMA in his game: punching, kicking, wrestling, grappling, elbows. You know, great takedown defense, uh, good get-up game. I just, I've seen everything I need to see. The big question is, I guess what? If he doesn't get caught, just don't get caught by Billy Brand. I think Brand might have the bigger KO power, but I don't think he's going to be able to catch Cody in this. You know, um, I like Hatton. Uh, again, coming out of Australia, we've seen these guys coming out of Australia have looked really good. And I think Billy Brand, they're kind of bringing him in here. Like, all right, he's 5-1, and one, he fought Peyton. We can get a name here. All they're going to talk about on the broadcast is <laughs> Billy Brand fought Peyton Talbot. Billy Brand right. fought Peyton and took him to round three. And da, 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 da. So uh, give me Cody in this one. I don't know if it's a finish. Uh, he does tend to win by finish, but that's only a six and one record. I don't think it's a big enough sample size to just assume. Um, but yeah, still playable by himself. Give me Cody. Um, I love Cody as well. Uh, I actually called Jim and I was like, can you watch this? Can you look yeah. at these fights? Uh, what your opinion? I don't want to tell you mine. Uh, I really like uh, Cody Haddon in this matchup. Is he, a, is he going to be a good UFC prospect? Uh, he'll probably win some fights in the UFC if he advances out of here. Um, I have an interesting theory. Um, I'm out on Uriah Faber's guys. Um, Peyton Talbot is a unicorn. That he, like, Peyton Talbot's a star. Like, he's just unbelievably gifted. He's got an aura about him. His physicality is, like, unmatched. And, of course, Uriah Faber, you know, partners up with UFC. I think they're pretty weak, man. We watched Juarez last week get steamrolled, and he's their yeah, champ. Yeah. Um. So, I'm wondering about these guys coming out of, um, you know, this A1 combat. I mean, look at Billy Brand's... Okay, beat a guy that was three and zero, but then one and one, one and zero, zero and one. Peyton Talbot's, you know, second pro fight, zero and zero. Um, you know, got some good, uh, got some good amateur fights, but he started in two thousand thirteen, man. Um, you know, the he pro started fight on... record looks like an amateur record. It it really like, does. It, that's what an amateur like Biagio Ali Walsh's competition has more wins than him. Yeah, I'm for sure. Those look like for sure. Um, Cody Haddon, um, I love his speed. I love his, uh, I, like you said, I love his combinations. He doesn't protect himself nearly as much as he should. He's too busy trying to land as many <laughs> as he possibly can. Um, but it works for him. Uh, he's tough. He's got a good chin. He's fought. I mean, got a guy nine and seven guy was 19 and 12 Guy was five and oh, he fought Urseg when Urseg was six and one. Um, so Urseg, you know, pretty polished at that point. And, they both have kind of started to wrestle a little bit more recently, I think. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Billy Brand is nearly as good uh, on the feet as Cody Haddon is. I think their wrestling may cancel each other out. But this is contender series. These guys know Dana White doesn't want to watch you wrestle. Dana you White wants you better sub them. Yeah, you better <laughs> ground and pound. You better do something. Um, and I think Cody Haddon is just going to be more experienced. Uh, another uh, little caveat. Billy Brand was by far the worst at weigh-ins. 
He looked yes. dead. He looked dead, man. He was he was not having a good time making uh, making weight. I, is he going to be fine for tomorrow? Sure, but Haddon looked fine at weigh in. Yeah. Haddon looked perfectly good. Um, I, th- I think Haddon's going to have a little bit of of the height advantage. I think he's going to be just a little bit bigger. I think he's going to do more damage uh, on the on the feet, and he's less than minus one ninety, minus one eighty. To me, on contender series, I think that's a really, really good one. Remember, you and I last week we were like, yeah, kind of like Kavanaugh, like yeah. kind of like Kavanaugh a lot. And it was like, yeah, it's minus one eighty, and then he absolutely steamrolled. So I don't want to miss out on that again. I'm keeping my eye on this on your eye favors guys. Yeah. I, I I think there's a big chance these guys are like kind of fraudulent. Um, when they're coming out of here. So uh, up next, Cam Roasten and Torres Finney. Our boy Torres Finney from last season. Uh, what do you make of this fight? I had to remember Torres. We were, <laughs> we were talking about it back. Oh, it's Torres. So, yeah, he's our boy, man. Uh, now, listen, he's built like a little fire hydrant. I was a little worried when I saw the size difference until I went and I looked up film on Cam. And watch film getting caught, dropped, and finished by guys that are probably shorter than Finney. So this big giant size advantage, he is so slow. Uh, he's one of these big, tall, lanky guys that the return on his techniques takes an eternity. <laughs> he's, uh, he's slow to take the hands back. And boy, is Finney going to be able to catch him. I think Finney gets inside, picks him up, and just slams him. And it's all Finney from there. Um the size difference, I think, has a lot of people shook, especially at face-offs. It's got to be a cartoon. Well, you know what? Size isn't everything. Steph, if size was everything, Stefan Struve would be undefeated. And <laughs> wow. It really work out that way. So, uh, I love Finney. Uh, Dana White brought him back for a reason. He's powerful. He's strong. We've seen his cardio hold up. Um, he can only be getting better from what we saw last year. I think that they probably threw some pretty good investment money in him. I wouldn't be shocked if the UFC had something to do with that. So give me Torres Finney probably by finish early. I, I really do not see Cam lasting two rounds with this guy. Um, um yeah. I I uh if there if you can find the prop, I would play it. Uh Finney by uh Maul and Destruction. <laughs> I mean he here here's one thing that I don't I don't hear a lot of in this industry. You guys know Jim and I love our theories and a lot of our theories are off the wall, but a lot of them have backstories to them. And that comes from really diving deep into doing some of the research. I actually heard like somebody like with a straight face talking about how he didn't get signed last season season to contender series. Go back and watch what Dana said, why he didn't get signed to Contender Series. Dana said, you're really young. You're only 24 at the time. You're a tank. You've got some holes in your game, but you're going to be a beast in the UFC. Yep. I don't want to bring you along too slow. And he actually said, he actually used the phrase, I would be doing you a disservice by putting you in the UFC right now. You need a little bit more work and then you're going to be great. And the look on Finney's face, he was like kind of disappointed, but I I almost thought he saw it coming yeah. and knew. And by the way, Dana White is right. There are some guys. Great call. That, it was a great, great call. call. So Dana's sitting there going, get him another fight, get him a year's worth of training. We'll bring him back and he'll smash a guy on contender series. And then we got a Torres Finney who's t- only 25. He's only 25 right. years old. This is right mm-hmm. in Dana's wheelhouse. So, but just by saying, well, Finney didn't get signed last season, you're missing the whole point as to why he didn't. So what does Finney do? Get some more training. And by the way, Finney's striking defense was really bad last time. And his striking was very, it was mediocre. He just threw wild. So he goes and he fights uh, Tyson Jeffries and he kills him. Uh, his striking, it was only minute 33. His striking is already better. Already absolutely better. It's much more under control. Um, it's a lot more pointed. And uh, this Cam Roasten. So Cam Roasten hasn't fought since 2022 where he beat. I, I watched this fight and good God. Uh-huh. No power. No speed. No movement. Um, I, I, have it ri- I have it written down here. So 
the combined record of the opponents Roasting has beaten is 12 and 27. And look what happens when he steps up in competition. He yep. fights a guy who's 4 and 0 and he gets knocked out in the first round. And then he loses to Jacob Malkoon in Jacob Malkoon's first fight. <laughs> Which means so. Jacob <laughs> Malcolm literally did not know how to punch. <laughs> so I mean, like he was a pure wrestler at that. Yeah, point. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, Roasting is not strong enough to keep Finney off. Finney is going to pick this guy up at, with mm-hmm. ease and slam him down. And you go, well, you know, maybe he could get sparked. You know, maybe Finney gets caught on the chin. This guy does not punch hard enough. I watch yeah. him. He doesn't. Um, and he hasn't fought in two years. This feels like. This feels like Dana had this circled last year on Contender Series. So it's Finney probably by finish. Um, it is Finney by finish. It's, it's mm-hmm. by finish. This guy's not going to survive. So Cortavius Romeus over Michael Imperato. Uh, I, I had a big change of heart on this one uh, watching weigh-ins. What's your take on this fight? Fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Fireworks. Not playing aside. No way. I thought Michael looked horrible. I didn't he? Right, he looked, he looked terrible. Horrible. Um, they're bringing Cortavius back. <laughs> he did him a favor with Tavares last year. Uh, he's at a size disadvantage. These two are going to go to the center of the cage and fire away. This fight's probably ending in round one. <laughs> I think they're just going to go at it, and somebody's going to fall down. I would not be surprised to see Cortavius knock this guy out quite quickly. I did not think he looked good at Wayne's one bit. I didn't like the vibe skill set wise. I mean, again, it, it goes over. They're just bangers. They're going to come out like two alley cats. Uh, I don't think they're going to be cautious. We haven't seen that on contender series and you can't be cautious and get a contract. We had a guy last week win a fight apparently dominantly because it was unanimous decision and he still didn't get a contract. You have to go for the finish. So that's going to lend to fireworks. I, I can't wait to see what the total is on this fight. I mean, last week, so last year, you know, with Finney, Dana was like, yeah, you're not getting a contract, but, you know, we'll, we'll see you. They, remember, he didn't give Knutson a contract, and then th- three weeks later, she was fighting in the UFC because everyone told him he was, you know, a dipshit. Um, last week, Dana gave him the, like, I'm not giving you a contract, and I'm really disappointed in you. Yes. Like, it was, it was like the complete talk down to, like, you're, you move on your merry way. We'll never see you again. So, uh, I'm with you that Thunder is the only way to play this one. I couldn't believe how bad Imperato looked. I, yeah. I, I didn't recognize him. I, like, I was like, who? I just, I had, I had my screen open, but it wasn't, like, enlarged. And I saw this small little fella get on the scale, and I was like, who is that? Mm-hmm. And I was, they were like, oh, this is Michael Imperato. I was like, that? What happened to him? Um, he looked terrible. Absolutely. So Again, coming from Canadian, the Canadian regional scene, not a great scene either. His fights have been pretty tough to watch. Um, I know there's a submission here, but this guy, Ricky Badeas, is, mm-hmm. is pretty bad. Um, I mean, just look at uh, Romeus's, uh, <laughs> like, round one, round one, round one, round one, round one. He did lose a split decision, uh, but most recently, man, his fights are over real quick. And if he does what he did against Ramon Tavares, which is just stand there and throw as many punches as you can in the first 30 seconds, uh, <laughs> it should be should be pretty good. So, um, All right, guys, if you could hit the like button. If you have not subscribed to the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel, go ahead and do that. Get notified of all of our uh, UFC content, PFL content. We got NFL futures up every week. We do Dana White contender series, and uh, Jim, we cannot talk enough and more highly about our live shows, right? Oh, it's it, they've been great. They've been great. We've been hitting some numbers that are just outlandish. You know, we can sit here and and piss and moan about judging, or we can make it work for ourselves. And that's what we've done over the past couple of weeks. Uh, please join us if you have the time. You know, uh, one thing we just noticed is these live bets, you know, when it rounds could be 1-1. These judges, we just had a judge removed for giving a 30-27. I mean, (laughs) some value in these live lines. And yeah, you're seeing things that you can't build into your handicap. And when you can't build that into the number, you have to see it live. You have to be available to watch it. So please join us for Contender Series. Join us for PFL, UFC. We've been really doing well live. Yeah, the, the, the show's called Takedown Live, and we do all the events. Um, last week, we got Bruno Lopez at plus 154. Mm-hmm. 
when it looked like he got knocked down, it turned out he just kind of tripped a little, <laughs> a little yes. bit, and all of a sudden the line just went the other way. Um, and then uh, you you get weird things like last week we noticed one fighter came out with his what teenage like friends, high school and, soccer team friends apparently or something. And uh, his opponent came out with Ben Henderson. <laughs> so that was an easy bet, uh, and it cashed, of course. <laughs> so uh, those are the kind of uh, odd things that you get. And by the way, the Contender Series live shows, I would say, are my absolute favorite. Uh, we award the BMF Award at the end of the night uh, for the for the best performance, and then um, – we go to the end of the end of the season where we award uh, the the uh, the best fighter of the season, and the winner of the BMF of last season was Carlos Prates, who has still been cashing tickets for us in the UFC. So a uh, lot of fun. Uh, please join us uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, let's get into oh here here we go. Here's here's the fight. Here's the fight. I can't wait to talk about uh, Rizvin. Uh, I think it's I think it's Kanaev. I've heard Kanaev and Kanev. Mm-hmm. So uh, whatever way you want to pronounce it, against Hugo Kana. Can I start first? Can I please start first? Yeah, go 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 go. Okay, <laughs> so this is this is what if you don't do your due diligence and you don't do your research, you're going to end up with Kanaev in your in your parlays at minus six hundred, thinking, wow. I got a guy who who beat Ren and Frera, and then it got ruled to a no contest. Well, I wonder what happened to this guy who has been on an absolute tear. Well, after he beat Ren and Frera, he tested positive for all the steroids. <laughs> like, I don't think there was a steroid that this man was not taking. Um. He was part of the entire PFL dust up where a bunch of them uh, got popped, but he was one that was taking the hard shit. Like this was not the Barry Bonds cream. This was the jab at my ass uh, (laughs) (laughs) level of steroids. Um, So we haven't seen could I have in a long, long time uh, since that uh, Ferreira fight. So I went back Jim and I, Decided to do a little side-by-side uh, comparison. Let's take a look at... Uh, <laughs> at so, this picture on the left is right before the fight starts. This is the night he beat Ferreira and then tested positive for steroids. Ladies and gentlemen, this is him this morning at weigh-ins. Mm-hmm. Um, that looks like a man who is not on the steroids anymore. And keep in mind, this is the same weight class. <laughs> yes. He is... wasn't at welterweight and now heavyweight. This is that yes. was him at heavyweight. This is him at heavyweight. So, um, now, I know what you're saying. Oh, come on. You guys are exaggerating. How could you possibly know he was taking that many steroids? <laughs> well, let's take a look at his back. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> look at at the skin issues going on at this man's bat. This was the night he beat uh, Renan Ferreira, and this is him uh, this morning. Uh, Jim, you've been in that world for a long time. Um, I I don't remember seeing that big of a stark contrast between someone's back skin. Um, the the only the skin is one thing the body type you've only seen when somebody like Carl Williams decides to go up to <laughs> a weight class you know and he just puts on flab uh, this is weird man I mean like you want to talk about the the gyno uh, drip that he's he's got him in both it just it screams screams steroids screams, what's what's screams. Uh, describe the 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 gyno drip. So, like, you know, your hormones go just like out of whack when you're pumping yourself full of all the steroids. So if you look at your pecs, your pecs drop. <laughs> Everybody used to say it about Izzy. You get the one. So you get this little dip going on here. All of a sudden, your nipple's pointing south. It's that, that gyno. I forget what the actual technical term is, but we always used to call it gyno boob. <laughs> so, you get well, changed before a tournament and go, wait a minute. <laughs> I would oh say God. we get some pretty good uh, evidence here that there's been a lot of steroids going on. Okay, so what, is it, what, what does that mean? Well, that means uh, 
I'm not betting on a guy who is completely off of the juice and clearly was on the juice for a long, long period of time. I mean, seriously, you think they're testing in Pro FC and UMC no, and Goretz FC and Eagle? and No way. Um, this is a guy who won on Contender Series in 2021. Um, if you lay minus 600 on this man, you are asking for trouble. So uh, what? who's his opponent? I actually kind of like him. I actually kind of like Hugo Cunna, and here's what I like about him. Um, he doesn't fade like most guys his size. Um, this fight against Edward Neves, who's terrible, um, but he is, a, he is a fighter who we've seen before. Uh, Kuna really uh, finished him late in round two and did not look like his energy uh, was dropping. He's fought bad competition, but he's finished – uh, most of them, but I watched him go the distance, a sp- close split decision uh, on one championship. And what do we say, Jim? I would much rather have this guy be 8-1 and one than 9-0. and right. oh. He's tasted defeat. Um, how did he respond uh, by losing? Well, he goes to LFA, beats Batista, and then uh, gets Archo Nez. Um, I, I just, I think you're, I think you're asking for trouble to lay this kind of price. Uh, can I have this is my upset pick of the week. I think mm-hmm. Hugo, if you don't know the backstory of can I have, you're just going to throw this in parlays. And I think that's a massive, massive, massive mistake. Um, I got Hugo winning either by decision or winning by knockout or submission in round three. When can I have just gases himself and can't really do anything. This is also a terrible like contender series is not like if could I have tries to do what he did against Ren and Frere, which is hold him against work. the fence the whole yeah. time, the rest is going to break him and it's going to be on the feet. So, um, what do you think sprinkle on Hugo? Is it worth it? I Most think it, it's, it's going to be can in the first three minutes after that, he's got no shot, just <laughs> literally no shot. His cardio is going to fall off such a cliff if he's not on the juice. And he's got to wrestle this giant of a man. Hugo. This guy's huge. Uh, when they faced off, uh, there is no size advantage for Kanaev either. Absolutely. You can say what you want about when he fought Ferreira as well, but that was when Ferreira had zero, 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 zero ground game. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. Okay, you replay that fight now, it doesn't go that way, even if he's on the steroids. Um, yeah, I think Hugo's worth a sprinkle. I think this line is going to move severely. If it doesn't and it keeps piling, just bide your time. And you might get a great live line as well. Because if, you know, Kanai was going to throw some heat in the beginning of the fight. And if it stays standing for three rounds, it'll be interesting. So, yeah, stay away from the favorite. Last fight, main event, Pat Pitlick and uh, Andreas Gustafsson. Um, I sent something out on Twitter about Gustafsson's uh, fight a couple fights ago. And Tommy Unders reached out and was like, yeah, I remember that fight. I had I had Gustafson at minus five hundred. So he's been following mm-hmm. Gustafson for a while. He mentioned something that I had no idea about, and this is why it's so important to know the backstory. He told me this is the first fight Gustafson has it uh, there has has to be tested mm-hmm. uh, for banned substances. He did not look as small as he did in, in previous fights. So you got to wonder what's going on there. Um, it, I mean, this is – I have this as early nominee for fight of the year. This is going to be insane. Who do you like mm-hmm. in this fight? I'm going with Pat. You know, his backstory was something real interesting. You you touched on that with me yesterday. You know, he had a bad neck injury, took some time off, took a boxing fight because he couldn't feel his legs. Like, when you yeah. hear like that, you're like, what? Um, look, after face-offs, I think Pat knows something, man. I think he, I, I was getting some kind of a vibe. It wasn't cockiness, but it's almost like he's looking at him like, wow, you don't look as big. Oh, wait, you're not fighting in Russia. This is the <laughs> UFC. You know, he was on the ultimate fighter. He's been around this organization. Uh, if this, if this gets after two minutes, I really like Pat just from his skill set wise too. I think these guys are going to throw down and whoever's cardio goes first or chin goes first, they're going to hit the deck. This is another one. I love to not go the distance. I think this, somebody gets exposed in this fight. I know they're both tough, but I can see somebody uh, proving that they're not supposed to be here or something's off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Tommy also brought up that Gustafson's coming down um, a weight oh, class. So geez, that's just so, a recipe for disaster. Yeah, so the the fight I was talking about was Gustafson versus uh, Tony Lampinen. Do yourself a favor and go watch this fight. It is one of the craziest, bloodiest, most violent fights I've seen. Um, I went and looked up Tony Lampinen. Lampinen lost and really absorbed a dangerous amount of punishment. And look what happened to him. He got knocked out, like, the next two fights. Um, He, like, I know he got knocked out here, but previous loss was a decision. He did get, uh, you know, knocked out before. But um, I was, while I was watching that fight, I was like, I wonder how these guys are going to do after. I mean, it was kind of one of those career-altering, life-changing amount of punishment. So, um you know, Gustafson's beating beating Lampinen pretty bad the first, and then Lampinen just nails him with a with a shot that breaks Gustafson's nose. They're both bleeding everywhere. They're both trading a bunch of shots. Gustafson finally gets the upper edge, uh, but he's an animal man. And it was interesting because I wanted to see how he was going to look after that fight. Dude fought like five months later, mm. and the fight only lasted ten seconds. So you didn't get you didn't get a chance to see like what is you know how recovered he was. Um, he is a absolute tough SOB and yeah, Pat Pitlick, I, I know what you're talking about with weigh-ins. There was something strange going on. So here, so here's, so mm-hmm. Pat Pitlick's story is he, he has this fight against, uh, Jake Lindsay and he has this back injury and he says, I can't, I, I can't kick and I can't wrestle. So he boxes <laughs> cause he's like, I can still punch. And he somehow goes to a draw, except his back is completely messed up. Uh, so he has to get surgery, comes back, um, knocks a couple guys out in unified MMA, and be honest, looked really good uh, mm-hmm. doing it. Um, thought he looked healthy. What was weird was I like Pat, I like Pitlick too because it feels like this is a setup for him because he's got history with the UFC. He was – Yeah, it's strange, right? Did you notice that the guy like doing the weigh-in stuff, they were friends? It's yes. good to see you yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And the staff like knew him knew like he had been around them for a while though, or d- there was something about like, something why does Pitlick on. feel right at home um, here? So uh, yeah, you, you've all, so Pitlick was involved in the let me bang bro um, episode of the ultimate fighter. And he tells the story. I don't, I don't know if he was actually fighting there, uh, but he was like there. No, he was, I think he was one of the ones holding people back. Yes. Yeah. So, so he was, so he tells this story about, it's like, yeah, we were, uh, the night got completely out of control. Um, the next day I know it's just the morning and Dana White's in the house, like yelling at people, can't do this, can't do that. And he's like, I realized I got so blackout drunk the night before. I don't remember one second of it. He's like, I don't remember anything about the let me bang, bro. Thing. Cause everyone was so drunk. So, uh, you know, Pat, Pitlick has some very strange history with USC. The other weird thing why there is no chance in hell this thing is going the distance. Like I I I, I think it's under one and a half. Both these guys are in their 30s. Yeah. And what does Dane always say? You gotta win convincingly if, he, if he's gonna sign you at the 30s. He says, well, he I'm not alone. looking for a 30-year-old <laughs> contender. So they're mm-hmm. putting a 33-year-old and a 35-year-old. Mm-hmm. Against each other, the, one of these guys is gonna have to put on the performance of a lifetime. It's got to be this viral knockout, um, so Dana can put him in there. But this is Dana that gave Jose Medina a contract for getting his ass kicked against a Magomed last season, just because Dana had a good feel for him. Uh, <laughs> there's something about this kid. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. So let's recap. We both like Cody. I uh, know her, Billy Brand. Uh, we like Finney by Murder. Um, I think we like Ramius, right? Inside yeah, the I'm distance. Ramius, yeah. Okay. Definitely inside the distance, Anders. Yeah. Yeah, Imperado, man, there was just something off about him at way. It just didn't look like the guy that I had watched uh, in previous videos. Uh, we're calling for the upset. Hugo, Hugo, kind of against a non-roided up um, Rizvin there. So um, there's just too many red <laughs> flags with the guy's physical appearance. So. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we'll take a stab on Pat Pitlick um, there, uh, as a nice underdog. So uh, last week, what was it? Four favorites, one underdog, one. Yeah. So we're going to go with three favorites. 
and uh, two underdogs for the video. Uh, we do have our 5% play that is up. Make sure you go ahead and uh, grab that. Um, I just want, I mean, one last look at, at, <laughs> at Ritzman. It's just too much for me, man. It's too much. So. Uh, yeah, so 5% UFC uh, Dana White contender series plays are up. Uh, we're still running the special buy seven days for the price of three. That is good until Tuesday night. So lock that thing in now. That way you get all of our contender series plays out. So uh, that is going to do it for us, guys. Good luck on all your plays. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Join us on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel. And we will be live for Takedown Live on the YouTube channel called Winning in the Shadows. We're going to be watching all the contender series live and we'll be uh, hopefully making some more uh, some more profits off of some of our live bets. Good luck we're, on your place. We're watching them coaches. And we're watching the coaches, we're watching, we're watching the body watching language, everybody. uniform. Uh we hit we we've, we've hit a couple fade the uniform um um theory plays, so the live show is definitely where it's at. Hope to see everyone there. Good luck on your place. We'll see everyone later. See you tomorrow.